and Avalanche get the Just Cause franchise back on course. The arrival of the latest series entry, Just Cause 4, sees the developer scaling up its ambitions for the game. Even more intense physics, more diverse tasks, more action-packed missions and the arrival of adverse weather conditions spread across four different biomes. Bearing in mind how much the last game struggled on consoles, has the developer bitten off more than it can chew? It's against the odds perhaps, but the truth is that Just Cause 4 does indeed pull it off. The game is far more ambitious and yet the performance delivered is a night and day improvement over its predecessor. But is there a catch to this? Well, that depends on which platform you're playing on. We're looking at Xbox One X footage here where Avalanche targets a maximum native 4K resolution, but in common with all console versions, dynamic resolution scaling, DRS, is in play. This is where Avalanche makes its first attempt to tackle the heavy burden of rendering those often insane visual effects. By reducing the amount of pixels drawn, the GPU completes a frame more quickly, better allowing the game to hit its target 30 frames per second frame rate. As is the case with prior Just Cause titles, the open world is vast and Rico Rodriguez can explore it as he sees fit, meeting out his own particular brand of explosive justice. But far more of an effort is made to push the game's systems to even more spectacular effect. Boosters, airlifters and retractors add more utility to the grapple system and not only up the ante in terms of destruction but also open the door to some basic puzzling. New weapons show some insomniac level imagination here and this time iron sights are open right from the beginning, adding some much needed precision to the blasting right from the off. Vehicle handling? That's been a focus for Avalanche 2 with much improvement over the last game in terms of the feel of the vehicles. The arrival of adverse weather conditions is a highlight too. Twisters can rip through towns, cities and bases, smashing through bridges, ripping up all destructible scenery and vehicles from the ground, while high speed winds during a sandstorm upend gameplay and enhance the destruction still further. And depending on the console you play, everything runs without a hitch for the most part. Yes, Square Enix did promise an emphasis on smooth performance, but bearing in mind just how much of a battering frame rate could take on Just Cause 3, and just how many times gamers have been let down by poor CPU performance from the current gen AMD Jaguars, it's easy to be pessimistic about the sequel's chances here, especially with the physics system pushed so hard. I mean, let's flash back here to Just Cause 3 running on Xbox One, and also running under back compat on X hardware. Despite the vast increase in GPU power, a locked frame rate was still well off the table with the enhanced consoles. Yes, in like-for-like -like scenes, the X clearly outperforms the base model running similar scenarios, but check this out. Even with the power of the X, including its decent CPU bump, frame rates could still drop to 20 frames per second in situations like this where we're just blowing up a petrol station. So how has Avalanche attempted to improve performance? For a start, most of the game has been recoded from the ground up with optimization in mind. There's a particular focus on moving the Havoc physics system to soak all available CPU cores. Secondly, Avalanche has done a lot of work on the graphics side, reducing the impacts that large explosions have on GPU resources, while at the same time introducing dynamic resolution scaling on all systems. In more challenging scenes, we've seen Xbox One X here drop to 1440p, and it's the Microsoft system that offers by far the cleanest resolution of all of the consoles. We've noted scaling up to 4K, but Square Enix tells us that the system itself can scale down to 1080p, not that we've actually seen this yet in our pixel count samples. Stacking it up side by side with the PlayStation 4 Pro, the advantage of the X is pretty clear to see. Square Enix tells us that the Pro runs with dynamic resolution scaling as well, to a maximum of 1440p, but the numbers we see in the heat of the action are much more consistent at 1080p. Meanwhile, when we look at the vanilla PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, DRS can see both systems drop to as low as 720p. Now, Square Enix says that 900p and 1080p are the maximum here. 
However, in common with the PS4 Pro, the base machines tend to spend more of the time at the lower end of the resolution scale, which is kind of strange. Only Xbox One X really demonstrates a wide range of resolutions from our sample counts, and there's no doubt that the base consoles especially can look rather grainy in the heat of the action. It's really surprising just how long even PlayStation 4 can spend at 720p resolution across the duration. So let's talk performance then as I think that this is key to the playability of the Just Cause experience and the area where we really needed to see massive improvements over the last game. We've attempted to cram as much explosive action into the tests as we can, but do bear in mind that Just Cause 4 is a huge game where literally anything can happen. So we may well revisit this one further down the road once we have a measure of its toughest stress points. But in the here and now. Let's kick off with Xbox One X which has the highest spec and runs at the highest resolution. Yes, first impressions here are positive. The big explosions, high speed traversal and intense physics that challenged Just Cause 3 so profoundly aren't really a problem on the X. Everything runs smoothly with only a small amount of dropped frames, even when things really get busy. So yes, there are some dips, but they are not particularly noticeable during the heat of the action. And the heavy motion blur helps just a little to mask the stutter. PlayStation 4 Pro does have a significant resolution deficit next to Xbox One X, and this translates into an image that lacks the same kind of clarity. So yeah, Microsoft's machine definitely has the advantage there. However, the Pro is a touch smoother. It hands in the most consistent 30 frames per second reading out of all of the console versions of the game, and I struggled to find any kind of issue at all with performance across a bunch of missions. In fact, it took a visit to the Tornado here to register a single drop frame at all during gameplay. So let's put both enhanced consoles side by side then, and it's pretty clear that general Just Cause performance is good on both systems, but PlayStation 4 Pro just a touch more consistent with that rock solid lock to 30 frames per second. However, the look of the X version is definitely preferable. You see, Just Cause 4 is a pretty grainy looking game. In part, this is down to the resolution scaling, but it's also down to the heavy post-processing pipeline. In this respect, the X has a big advantage that persists across all gameplay, while Pro's small performance lead is noticeable, but we're literally just talking about a small clutch of dropped frames on the X. However, this does suggest that the Pro may have more overhead here, and this may have implications for further on in the game. That said though, maybe the X's CPU clock advantage may give that system the advantage when physics really kick in hard. Next up, let's discuss the vanilla PlayStation version of the game here. Again, there is the same higher level of performance consistency across the experience compared to Just Cause 3, which just like the Xbox build, did have some profound issues. Fleetingly across the run of play, you will see some small issues. There's a performance drop here to around 27 frames per second for the entire duration that the explosion is on screen in this chase scene. This is an outlier in our tests though. Elsewhere, the pyrotechnics kick off in style and frame rate still holds up. I mean, we've got a tornado here running through a town and the frame rate still perfectly fine. Again, the heavy post-processing and the lower resolution can impact the quality of the experience, and in some respects, this is less impressive than Just Cause 3 in terms of the overall pixel count. I mean, in some scenarios, we would be looking at 720p versus 1080p. But yeah, I'd take smoother performance personally, though sometimes, yeah, that image can be pretty grainy. All of which brings us on to the Xbox One version of the game, which is easily the least stable release out of all console editions. I'd still say that overall, we're looking at a noticeable improvement in performance compared to Just Cause 3. But the vanilla Xbox is impacted on two fronts. First of all, the dynamic resolution scaler is more aggressive still than it is on PlayStation 4. So while that version could be, you know, pretty blurry or grainy in its heaviest scenes, Xbox One here is blurrier for more of the time. And that's simply down to the fact that it does have a weaker GPU. Secondly, Areas that all other versions of the game sail through with a locked 30 frames per second will see performance dips on the base Xbox One here. Even relatively simple scenes will see a clutch of drop frames while the performance dips are far more sustained in heavier action scenes. I suspect that the dynamic resolution scaler reaches its lower bounds here and when that happens the only way is down for frame rate. 
Even so, the lowest frame rate I logged across an hour of intense play is 24 frames per second and I don't need to tell you that even this is a big improvement over JC3's similar low point. By and large though, when performance is impacted you are in 25 to 30 FPS territory. Here's how Xbox One performance stacks up against its nearest competitor, the vanilla PlayStation 4, and the usual lead platform for most multi-platform projects. When the dips are as sustained as this, it is noticeable. So what's the score here? Why is the Xbox One dropping the most frames out of all of the consoles? Well, obviously it has the least capable GPU out of the bunch, but the system is also hamstrung by the fact that it only has 32 megabytes of high bandwidth memory the so-called ESRAM, when every other current-gen PlayStation and Xbox console on the market uses unified memory, the onus to optimise diligently for ESRAM is less of a priority. And let's be clear here, it's not just this title where this gap is noticeable. Square Enix tells us that more ESRAM optimizations are due in a future patch, which should hopefully tighten up performance on the base Xbox One here. I think it's pretty clear from the footage that Xbox One is the weaker platform and while based PlayStation 4 still isn't my preferred platform for playing this game, it is a lot lot smoother overall. That said, I did notice this oddity. Traversing the environment here sees the PlayStation 4 struggle and while Xbox One still drops the odd frame, it's outperforming the Sony machine. This is an outlier though and by and large, PlayStation 4 is a much better match for the task at hand. Ok, so before we move on, let's recap the Just Cause hierarchy as I see it right now. Just in terms of overall image quality, Xbox One X is a clear step ahead of the other consoles. PS4 Pro, the smoothest performer of the lot, and as we progress further into the game, maybe that additional overhead it seems to have could be more significant. Bottom line though, you are getting a little more fluidity in the experience, but you are paying for it with a consistently lower resolution image. Given the choice between the two, Xbox One X would be my choice here. Base consoles, no need to dwell too much on this. PlayStation 4 is more solid and is clearly the preferable experience. So yeah, here's hoping that Avalanche's planned ESRAM optimizations pay off with a smoother ride further along for owners of the vanilla Xbox. I also hope that the developers take a look at that dynamic resolution scaler. It seems to be working as expected on Xbox One X, but once we move on to the other consoles, it seems to spend a lot of its time at the lower bounds of the DRS range. Loading times next. This was a big issue in JC3, but aside from one longer load at the beginning of the game, Just Cause 4 is just a lot, lot faster generally. And you can see that here. Loading times between story beats and respawns are generally in the 10 to 15 second territory, and that's a huge improvement over the last game. Okay, so I want to finish up with some general notes about JC4. Resolution and performance aside, the visual feature set looks to be fairly uniform across the consoles. There's little in the way of significant difference that I could pick up on. I honestly think that it's PC where you need to go for much higher fidelity visuals, if you've got the GPU power to handle it of course. I did notice that screen space reflections on water are of a higher resolution on the enhanced machines, but this may be down to the higher native resolution full stop. I'd say that there's a reasonable argument for a little more polish to go in to the game and that goes beyond the DRS system. Texture streaming seems to be a bit slow in some cases and occasionally higher resolution art doesn't fully resolve. Oh, one more thing that the enhanced consoles seem to have higher resolution textures. This is definitely the case on the Xbox One X where the additional resolution makes the art very easy to notice. However, with Pro spending so much time at 1080p, it's more difficult to see if the enhanced art is actually implemented on that system. Square Enix says it is, so it may well present more clearly in other scenes. But that's the lie of the land with Just Cause 4 for now. Insane physics, plenty of fun but with some work to do to increase polish, especially on the base systems. Pro and X are easily the best ways to play and yeah we'll be taking a look at the final PC version. But that's all from us for now. Please do like and subscribe to support our work and yeah ring the bell for instant notifications whenever a new DF video drops. This video will be available on our Patreon site at digitalfoundry.net so if you want to support our work work more directly and see this video at master file quality, you know what to do. Anyway, thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video, assuming that you did and well just generally thanks for watching.